Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and in this video, I thought I'd probably talk about the giant windmill in the room. I built it because it was actually the first cardboard project in here. I thought, well, can I build a windmill out of cardboard? Yes, I can. I'll be show you kind of here how I did it. If you look at the board here, yeah, this is a blade for version 2. The blades up there right now are 18 inches long. This blade is 24 inches. The way that it's constructed is I've got a three-ply sandwich in both cases because that's all that would fit. I traced out my airfoil in AutoCAD, which is represented here by the blue line. Uh, in this case, I didn't use anything fancy. It was a NACA 0024, I believe. But what I did with the cardboard was traced inside the profile and found that I could fit three sections and I cut them to length such that their corners just touch the edge of my airfoil. So if you look at it on edge like this, you get that. I have the grain oriented at 90 degrees to each other. The grain that runs down the center runs parallel to the blade. The other ones run perpendicular because as the airfoil uh, skin comes up over this edge, I want to make sure that I have a lot of corrugations right at those corners to support that as it curves over. Now, obviously, I haven't skinned them yet. Uh, they're working just fine for now as far as, you know, fans and this and that. I did a test running down the hall back when I had that thing just freewheeling, and it actually spun really fast. So I'll see if I can dig that up and show you. But So I'll probably end up skinning it with either uh, Dr. Pepper cans, like I did with my airplane a while back, or I may use paper and then varnish it. Who knows? Or I may not skin it at all. We'll see. But what I did was I made a triangular rotor hub. The first version was solid cardboard, but it didn't hold on real well to the motor once I actually put a motor in it. It worked well for just a free spinning uh, dowel rod, but not for the motor. So I went ahead and inside here there is actually a MDF hub with a elongated slot cut in it that fits that motor shaft. The motor that I've got, which I'll show you here in a close up in a second, is a oscillator from one of those tall uh, cylindrical tower fans. In the very base of those, there is a motor that spins at like five or six RPMs really, really slow. And I'll show you here in a minute when I turn that thing on how slow. I mean, it looks like it might be out in a field somewhere spinning slowly, but it does spin really slow. So what I've got here on this one is an MDF hub with a slot cut in it for my motor uh, out of my tower fan oscillator. Inside these blades here, I've got reinforcement wires. Now, I don't need them for this fan because it doesn't spin fast enough. But during one of my initial tests with those blades and the, my older hub, I had it attached to my electric drill. I had it in second gear. It was spinning really, really fast. Some people across the room said they could feel the breeze. And then all of a sudden, boom, the blades flew off everywhere, luckily almost all at the same time. One of them went ceiling, one went the wall, one went straight down and almost cut my foot off. Except not. They're not sharp enough to do that. But and then I realized I probably better make sure those things stay on. So I had some old wire that I ran down my corrugations over the top of a paper clip that I bent to give me a nice hard edge up here, and then back down the, the, uh, another corrugation, and then they're all twisted together in the middle of that hub. The hub is hollow between this front face and the back MDF piece. So these are all now fastened tightly to the hub, so it would take a lot of centrifugal force to throw those things off that hub. I do intend to actually use it to generate some power just because someday, but for now it just looks cool like this. So then, my mast is made up of a lap joint. I've got two pieces that are um, obelisk shaped. It's six inches by four on the bottom, and I'll show you here in a close up in a second. But the two pieces, you know, you cut a slot in them and they fit together like that. So, and then it's glued in place. But I've got a diamond profile at the bottom and a diamond profile at the top. I'm going to go ahead now and show you close-ups of kind of how all this fits together a little bit better. So here I've got an example motor of what I've got in my wind windmill up there. Uh, it's an identical motor out of a different fan that I took apart. This is from a different project. This is for my mobile mobile for my son. You can see here, uh, maybe if you can see, it spins at 5 or 6 RPMs depending on whether it's hooked to 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz. So I'm spinning at 6 RPMs. The shaft here has two little flat spots on it that allow it to transmit the torque as it spins. 
it's geared way down. That's why the shaft is off axis. So that's why it only spins at six RPMs. So I'm going to show you now kind of how this thing fits in the whole scheme of things. So as I zoom in here, you can see the mast a little bit better. You can see the duct tape holding my power wire. The cubic thing there in the middle is the nacelle mounted on top of that mast. You can actually see some of the motor mount tab and screw sticking out. And of course, right now, everything's just held in place by duct tape. And here you can see it going around. I actually had to cut the mast down two inches because I neglected to measure the distance to the top of the ceiling and it was hitting every time it was going around. But here it is out at 6 RPMs, looking like it's, you know, out in the field somewhere spinning nice and slow. But thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it.